Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I would like to demonstrate the capabilities of GLScope Client to integrate multiple instruments, potentially of different makes or models. In this case, at left we have a 4 GHz Teledon LaCroix WaveRunner 8404 M-MS, and at the right we have an 8 GHz Tektronix MSO64. At the back of each instrument I've already connected a 10 MHz reference clock to the external reference inputs. Our input signal for this test is a 1.25 gigabit per second Ethernet signal coming from a test fixture with two SFP Plus optics. In order to calibrate out the trigger delay between the instruments, GLScope Client needs to have the same input signal provided to one channel of both instruments. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, and which one you pick really depends on your test fixture and particular lab environment. You can use one probe from each instrument touched to a common point, you can use a signal generator with multiple outputs. In this case, I'm going to use a short length of semi-rigid coax to connect a two-port RF power splitter from mini circuits to the output of our test fixture, and then connect the output of the splitter with two identical cables to each of the instruments. Once we've connected the test signal, we need to ensure that they will trigger at the same time. Typically this is done by connecting a cable from the trigger output of the primary instrument to the external trigger input of the secondary. In this case, this is the white cable that you see coiled up connected to the right side of the MSO6. So if we start Gelscope Client, we can see that we've got signals from both instruments, but they're not lined up. If we pause the acquisition, for example, we can see that right now we've got about a 1.3 nanosecond delay between those edges. And since we're looking at a repeating pattern, we don't know if the actual delay is that or a multiple of it. So in order to prevent any ambiguity, I'm going to go and generate some traffic on the link. Just an iperf test, nothing fancy, but it'll mean that we don't have significant autocorrelation within the signal and will make it much easier to determine the true phase offset. So now I've turned on our traffic generator and now we need to actually synchronize the instruments. So to do this, all we gotta do is set up instrument sync We've selected the Wave Runner as the primary because that's the one that our trigger is coming from. We've got a common reference clock. We've got the trigger cable connected. And we're going to use channel 2 on each instrument as our reference point. So now it's just going to download some reference waveforms. We take 10 averages and measure the cross-correlation between them at different offsets. And from there, Gelscope Client will calculate the optimum phase offset in order to sync both instruments. And we're done. And now let's see how well it did. Seems like we're pretty close. We've got about a 50-ish picosecond offset here. Probably could refine it a little more if we tried, but that's good enough for our purposes. Now that the synchronization is complete, we can move cables around arbitrarily and connect the instruments to test points of our choice. As long as we don't mess with the trigger cable, they'll remain synchronized. The splitter is no longer necessary and uh, we have one differential pair for transmit going to one instrument and one pair for receive going to the other. The one going into the wave runner and the other going into the MSO6 as well as the function generator output. So let's see what sort of analysis we can do on these. Let's do an eye pattern of the wave runner input.
So we can see we've got some slight differences in these signals. The input to the Wave Runner is a little bit smoother because we're looking at all of the iPerf traffic. We've got a slightly different shape on the MSO 6s signals right now because we're primarily looking at the 8B10B idles. And of course we can do upper layer protocol analysis as well. And we've got an Ethernet frame right there. Okay, so this is all well and good, and it's handy if you've got multiple instruments, even if they're different makes and models, to be able to synchronize them into one environment. But so far, we're not doing anything too difficult. We've got one diff pair into one instrument and one into the other. Now, admittedly, this is a more realistic use case. But let's try and make this a bit more exciting. So what happens if we swap the pairs? So if we reorder them, you can see we've got Wave Runner Channel 2 and MSO Channel 2 on one half, and Wave Runner Channel 3 and MSO Channel 1 on the other. So if these were from the same instrument at the same sample rate, we could just subtract them and be done with it. It's a little bit more complicated because we do have 40 and 25 giga sample channels, so we're just going to need to resample them. We're going to do a times 5 here and a times 8 here. And now they're at the same sample rate. So we can subtract them, and we're going to call that pair 1, and now we can just get some of these other channels out of our way, and repeat the process for the other pair. We've got set by 5. Up sample by eight. And we actually want to flip that pair, I believe. So MSO C1 minus Wave Runner 8 channel 3, and we're going to call that pair 2. And again, clean out the channels we're not using. So now we can do clock recovery on that. We can do our usual threshold. Take a look at the AP10B. All right, that looks good. And of course, this all still works in real time. We can continue streaming data from the instruments as much as we want. This is a little bit slow because the tech MSO is not the fastest over Skippy. I'm somewhat disappointed in that. I've spent quite a while optimizing and it just looks like the instrument firmware can't keep up. So hopefully tech will fix that in a future firmware. For the time being, we do have to live with slow performance. But Let's press on and see how much data we can get out of this. So we've got the two diff pairs, we've done the protocol decoding. Now the fun part, some signal integrity. So here is the eye of the first pair. And now we can do an eye on the second pair. So as we can see, there's a little bit of duty cycle distortion going on because the 
Wave Runner is a 4 gigahertz scope, and the MSO is an 8 gig. If we really wanted to, we could put a band limiting filter on the MSO6's front end and somewhat make up for this. But depending on what sort of analysis you're doing, that may or may not be necessary. Realistically, you probably wouldn't be actually splitting a differential pair between two different scopes, certainly not two of different makes and models. So this is kind of a problem I've uh, put myself into on purpose. But I hope this did a good job of demonstrating the level of synchronization we can get between different instruments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next video.